Rent to the Future from the year 2000 by a glitch due to the Millennium Bug. I'm adapting to thrive in the peculiar conditions of the 2020s. Join me in a multimedia extravaganza as we surf the World Wide Web, catch up on two decades of video games, and mess around with creative tools new and old. I'm Millennium Cyborg. Welcome to the new millennium. Well, this is it. It's at 7.50, April 26th, and this is episode one, making my VTuber pre-pre-debut. Now, what the hell is a pre-pre-debut? Well, um, it's kind of a mind hack on myself. Um, I was watching all these other debut streams by other VTubers with really impressive assets and everything. And this is a way of telling myself that it's okay that not everything is finished and that I'll have a much better debut someday. Um, so let's go through what I just said. Um, I want to stream things I'm enthusiastic about and the, the, the setup and the asset creation is something I'm, I'm really enthusiastic about in itself. And so the, the setup is going to be a lot of the content. Um, so I said, surf the World Wide Web, we're going to be digging into the Internet Archive, digging out some old sites and magazines. Um, I've got several ideas already of things I want to cover, but um, I'm not sure if I want that to be small segments or dedicated streams. Catching up on two decades of video games, that speaks for itself. Um, but I'll be streaming plenty of games, hopefully ones that aren't so much covered by other VTubers. And Messing around with creative tools, that's going to be um, both some new tools and, and some uh, rather old ones like Bryce, which I used to, um, to create the background here. Herman Pona, great to see you. I'm really excited. Um, okay, so my aesthetic is obviously inspired by Y2K and Ray Flyers and so on. Here's a quick little mood board I put together. Um, so you can see, you can see I've, I've done my best to um, emulate some of these styles um, and I will continue to do so in, in future. Oh no, how do I go back? There we are. Right, onto the slides. My name is Millennium Cyborg, but that's quite a long name to say out loud. So um, my nickname is just K. I go to Millennium Y2K K. My birthday is April 26th. That's today. Now, that sounds like a terrible uh, choice to make, to have both your first stream and your birthday on the same day. But it's the, the inevitable consequence of having told myself that I would definitely have my first stream by my birthday. And so that's it. That's what happened. My age? Well, that's hard to define, so let's not worry about it. I'm 175 centimeters tall. Um, I've chosen as emoji the Unicode curly loop. Um, I kind of like it, and it wasn't taken. I'm a human, a human cyborg. Thanks, Ren. <laughs> Um, my job, I'm a computer toucher. I touch computers and they pay me money for it. I speak English, I speak some French, I speak a tiny bit of Japanese. Um, I can use C++, QBasic, JavaScript, Python, a bit of C Sharp, um, kind of whatever's not esoteric, I guess. And right, I'm a cyborg from the year 2000. Um, I'm sure I will elaborate on that law further in future streams. Why VTubing? Um, several reasons. Too many. Too many reasons. It was inevitable in the end. I was looking for a way to stream, um, to talk about things that I enjoy. Um, another way to put that is I I have some things that I like to talk about a bit too much and no one I know would be willing to listen. So I'm going to force you all to listen instead. Um, 
it's as a way to do some voice training. I'm making great progress with my voice. I'm, I'm very happy with how far I've gotten, but just being able to practice it regularly would be great. Um, I'm actually not the first YouTuber to say this even recently, but you know, I can quite easily go an entire day without speaking to anyone, without using my voice, so this is a way to force myself a bit. It's a great creative outlet. Um, I wanted to reconnect to some of the, the CG stuff I used to do and, and some of my other interests and in making music and so on, and just about anything I make can be thrown into, into this VTubing project. I'm really interested in, in the details of production as well, um, both live broadcast and like VTubing. I'm just really interested in how it all fits together. VTubers are basically superheroes. This is a random shower thought really, it's maybe underdeveloped, but there's something very cool about the whole secret identity aspect. And the other thing is, um, I kind of have this mental image when you see a really big VTuber with really, you know, impressive assets that that they have a power level that's, that's truly awesome. Um, but at the same time, you know, someone who's just starting and has, has just a couple of viewers is still still really special in a way that, that someone who isn't a VTuber is. Um, it's an opportunity to redefine myself outside the confines of other people's expectations and things that I would waste hours on, you know, browsing on the internet are, are research now. So those are all the reasons, or some of them. Video games. I want to stream some stuff that I haven't seen many other people stream. I'm really into futuristic races right now. Um, I want to stream some of those soon. I'm quite into arcade style light combat games, on rails shooters, um, res I think I'm going to stream very soon, some res. Rhythm games but like old ones, not recent ones. Sci-fi adventure games, again probably like some, some really old ones. Um, some puzzle games, some mech games, there's a whole bunch of mech games I'd like to try out. I want to play some PSX, N64 sort of era games especially, but also some more modern ones that are kind of reminiscent of that era. All right, the setup is the content. So let's talk about the setup. The hardware side I was super interested in before I started putting together my PC. I was like, I've got to know what all the VTubers are using for their setup. Um, and now I don't want to touch another PC again for two years at least. Um, but here it is in case you're interested. So I'm using a Blue Yeti and a Logitech C920. I think that's not a very unusual setup. I managed to snag a 3070 and um, Ryzen 5 5600X, and I'm using 60 gigs of 16 gigs of RAM and and a one terabyte SSD. Um, Software-wise, it's more interesting. So my model was made in Veroid Studio, imported and modified in Blender, imported into Unity, and then into VC Face, which is the um, the app I'm using to to animate the model. And wow, what a workflow. It's, it's really painful. I mean, it's my first time doing this sort of thing and rigging and all that sort of thing. Um, I fairly modified the model. Let's have a look at the model. So this is a mostly unmodified model from Veroid Studio. The things on my head, I'm calling the petals. They don't do anything right now, but I have some ideas for future functionality in mind. The only thing I've made in Blender custom is the, um, how do I rotate myself? Oh, physically. Um, this top, I modeled from scratch using the cloth simulation and, and a few tweaks after that. Um, it's not rigged very well yet. Um, you can see that my arms are going through the material of the cloth because the um, the area around the shoulders needs to be better weighted um, relative to the arm bones. And then I think the, the this part of the top turned out quite well. Um, and then below that it's the default sort of trousers and shoes and the same texture I slapped onto the top but not properly UV corrected. 
Um, so improving the model is going to be something to do in future streams. What's next? Um, so I'm using Inkscape for um, the general SVG style element in the um, stream overlay. I used Bryce for the background and let me show you because it's not just um, a static background but that's my first mistake <laughs> studio mode there we go Ta -da! I made a very short animation um, it doesn't loop well and it kind of can't loop well because the scrolling textures are procedural and without some kind of inherent support for looping I, I, I don't think it exists. Um, the best thing we can do is make a longer animation and then fade to something else which is the plan. Why am I back on this slide? Okay. There we go. Um, and then Visual Studio Code. So I used um, some JavaScript widgets for the the beats timer at the top, and also um, on the loading screen for the the text that's. I didn't want to just put loading, a lot of people just put loading um, and I wanted to be a little more creative and also the effect is inspired by some text effects that you see around the, the 2000s era uh, and that's all created using sort of an SVG canvas in a JavaScript widget. In fact, so this is the Swatch Internet Time one not very long. And then the loading messages. And that's a bit more fiddly. Once I'm happy with them, I'll probably stick them on, on a, a gist or something. So people can have a look. Alright, the slides keep resetting. Next! Oh no, I haven't finished the slide. Well, let's jump into it. Because I want to actually show the process of creating assets for the screen, I thought that I would um, talk through my goals while making a diagram of all of them. So, I've only tested part of this working, so let's see. Immediately running into trouble. I'll just align them after the fact. Let's align these and distribute them. Okay. Try to group them first. Okay, I don't know what I just copied. Okay. Either going to work really nicely, really quickly, or be a nightmare. There we are. I should have. Hmm. 
maybe done a bit more of this ahead of time, but here we go. So, first goal, make a gold diagram. We're doing that right now. Second goal, and I'm hoping to do this on stream as well, is going to be to make some scrolling credits. That's going to be another JavaScript widget. That's going to be this code. Okay, the icons thing is probably too much, isn't it? It's just one little step too many. Oops, and I'm not selecting it. Let's see. I laid this out ahead of time on a little post-it note. And I can't read it now. So the scrolling credits is going to be quite straightforward. Um, I think it's quite nice thing to have at the end of the stream. I want to improve my logos. These were not put together in a hurry exactly. I did spend some time on them, but I'm not quite satisfied with the result. And then I want to make a mini overlay um, that while I'm playing games and things also shows the logo, the time, the name of the game and everything. The main reason for that is when I see someone else's stream uh, clipped, and you can't see easily what um, what stream it came from. You know, I, I find that mildly annoying because I, I want to go back and find the original stream. So my idea is to just have all of that available, but like in a tidy little way in a corner somewhere. You know what, I'm going to forget about the fancy lines between the various goals. I'm just going to type this all up here. So the Twitch um, header images, I want to make those in Blender. And I thought that would be a nice, simple thing to make on stream. Um, I'm just going to extrude some um, some icons into a kind of uh, blobby silvery shape. Um, it all makes sense when you see it. And then write this Twitch section contents. to fix the transition I have. Um, so I've got this transition, right? Let's see, let's go to this. And the problem with it is, um, well, the static isn't great. Um, it really makes a mess of the encoding. Um, I want to make it more of a CRT turning on and off effect with no static instead. Oh, sorry, that was loud. It's hard to balance the stinger transitions. Um, I didn't find an independent volume for that. I'll, I'll bear that in mind. I won't use it again on this stream and I'll, I'll make sure to check for next time. Fix MIDI transition. I want to make some models. Um, okay. 
I want to make some some models to go with the um, the avatar. So a desk in front of me, a chair behind me, and those are going to be in Blender as well. I'm making it two separate goals because I don't know how long. I'm mostly it's the chair I'm worried about. It might take longer than expected. And then oh, I'm excited about this one. I'm going to make some more backgrounds in Bryce. And Bryce is not a modern piece of software at all. It's um, the latest version is Bryce 7.1 and it came out 10 years ago. And the only way I found to capture it correctly was to run it in a VM and then capture the VM. But it wasn't even that simple because I have to remote into the VM because the native interface doesn't work. And I'll talk about it more when I get around to actually doing the stream, but it's a really cool piece of software. Um, the UI is designed by the same person who did the UI for Kai's Paragoo, if you're familiar with that. And then I want to animate those, like I showed you earlier. Um, and then I want to have an intro. Which switches between the animations with crossfades, and that's how I'm going to um, fix the issue of looping of those animations. It's just going to have an animation that lasts a certain amount of time and then fades to another, so you won't notice a jump. And then I want one of those cool spectrum analyzer widgets that I've seen some people have on, on Twitch for the music. And then there's the hard stuff. So I need to fix the weights on the avatar's top. Um, I need... Okay, so... I have this idea to simplify the workflow somewhat because every time I modify the model in Blender and import it into Unity, um, it loses all of the um, the extra VRM information. In particular, I have to redo the blend shapes by hand. And um, you might notice my head doesn't have any spring bones. Um, the spring bones and colliders are also lost. And so you have to redo those. My idea is to um, write a little code that it won't be general purpose, it'll just be for my own model. To take the spring bones and colliders and blend shapes from a previous model and apply them to another model that's essentially got the same structure, just with, you know, fixes to the outfit and, um, and the bone weights and so on. I'm pretty sure I can do that. That's going to be a, a C sharp script for Unity. Um, probably not useful for everyone, but just for myself. And then exporting the new avatar. I don't know why that's a separate entry on my list. But there we go. I guess it fills up the grid. And then I want um, to fix the Blender render style. So the, the I want the Blender render Blender, render, blender, render, to match how things look in um, VC face so that I can then pose my model and make some interesting promo images. Inside Blender and bring in all kinds of 3D elements. And I've missed something. Did I? No, that's it. This one was going to be pre-debut. That will be all of the assets ready for a slightly more impressive stream. There we go. I'm going to leave it at that. I'll polish it up more later, add lines to represent the dependencies and put icons for the programs, and then I can start ticking things off as I complete the goals. 
Um, so all of these things I'm listing here will be things I will do on stream at some point. And let's export. And let's see if OPS will bring that in. Okay, that's a bit too large. <laughs> that can be fixed later. Okay. I think next it's making credits. Let's go over to Visual Studio Code. And here's what I prepared earlier. So this is an animation with CSS transforms. Um, it's kind of, I've not used them before I set this up, so um, it's a bit funny how they apply. And I've just got Lorem Ipsum here. And then separately from that, I've prepared the credits. So, the first thing to do is to fix the line height. Let's space this one out a bit. So I have to manually refresh every time I make a change. That looks better. I've chosen for now works. Let's get all those credits in and then start formatting. aiming to do as much as possible of the asset creation myself. Um, that's a big part of what's appealing to me about VTubing. Okay, the credit's going to get obnoxious. <laughs> I'll, I'll turn them back on once um, there's something to look at that's different. Um, but even if I'm making a lot of this myself, inevitably I'm having to rely on a lot of outside assets, a lot of outside references. I've listed everything I could think of here. So these we're going to turn into, well, let's see what an H1 looks like. Let's put H1 here. H2 for these. Goes alone. Not that. That's interesting. Why does it do that? <laughs> um. Why does it do that? Closing the paragraph, right? Is there something intervening here that's causing malformed HTML? Okay. 
Sets and Brinks. You want to have a bit of differentiation between the text sizes otherwise the body text is going to be really um really too big what can we do i'm still not sure why why the headings weren't working If you see me typing things that absolutely don't seem to make sense or relate to what I'm trying to type, it's because I'm using a fancy ergonomic keyboard with a weird layout. And I can't type. so it was foolproof but I didn't I didn't it didn't occur to me that the um, text sizes could, could be an issue Put one of these breaks in I could use a regular expression, but who wants to come up with a regular expression live on screen? The disadvantage of this widget is that I have to debug it based on the top part of it. Once it gets to the end, it takes too long to scroll all the way to the end to watch it every time. really early and that's true I could reverse the scroll direction I remember now the um, so my animations for the wobble um, those ones loop but the animation for the scrolling text isn't proportional to the um, size of the text. It's doing a translate of 100% then. I wonder. What does this do? Is it going to go really slowly but still stop just after the... Yeah. Transform... Trans no, that's... Okay, that's the wrong thing. I'm looking at the wrong thing. Um, it's the amount of scrolling. Well, that's what I translate. Why? Minus 100 to plus 100. Is it 100% of the wrong thing? It probably is. Let's 
make it go really fast. And oh, I thought that would go fast. Three seconds. Minus a thousand percent. to refresh it each time. So if I do 10 seconds now. Okay, so I think it'll be okay if we just go from that to 1,500 and 20 seconds and shrink the font a little because I can't get it quite working Font size. Hmm. I'm using relative font size. I don't know how good of an idea that is for this type of widget, but it means I can resize it and it, it sort of keeps making sense size wise, scale wise. Okay, that's really fast, but here we go. Good enough for now. I'll slow that down a tiny bit more. And I think I'll call it a day there. Thank you so much for coming. Um, Sorry if it was a bit of a mess, but um, I intend to continuously improve. Um, I think this time slot is particularly convenient for me, so I'll probably stream again on uh, on a Monday. And I might have guerrilla streams at other moments. Um, when it's convenient, I don't know yet. I'll figure it out. I will let you know on Twitter. I think that's everything. Well, it's time for me to go. And if you, like me, have caught the Millennium Bug, make sure to watch the next stream or find me elsewhere on the World Wide Web by clicking on the links below the video. I've been Millennium Cyborg. Keep that future vibe and I'll see you in the world of tomorrow.